All right, hey AP Chemists, this is the Unit 3 Lecture Part 15. This is the last lecture. I'll try and keep this short. This is Spectroscopy and the beer lampert Law. So if you may recall from previous lectures and previous units, the electromagnetic spectrum consists of different wavelengths, frequencies, and energies. A specific part is visible light. Um, and that encompasses wavelengths that absorb specific colors of visible light. And I kind of reminded here a little bit of an equation that you should remember from unit one. E energy is equal to HC over lambda. And that says if I have lower wavelengths, I'll have higher energy. And the opposite, higher wavelengths, lower energy. Um, this can help us understand quantities of specific colored compounds because the absorption of visible light is directly proportional to concentration. So the amount of light a substance absorbs is directly proportional to the concentration, meaning if I have a higher concentration, as you can see down here, I'll have a higher absorbance. If I have a lower concentration, I'll have a lower absorbance of visible light. And we could set specific instruments to wavelengths of light depending on the color of the solution. And I'd like you to try and sketch like these little graphs that I have right here. Um, basically what you'll get is you'll have absorbance versus concentration of, uh, sorry, absorbance or con absorbance versus wavelength. And you'll get like these graphs and the highest part of that graph is going to be the wavelength that you set all solutions to later. And we'll look at a question like that. So like this graph, its highest point, I'm going to pretend is 450 nanometers, but this graph on the right, its highest is 600 nanometers. <clears throat> so, um, instruments such as spectrophotometers and colorimeters can be used to determine the absorbance. And so, what happens is, let's say this is my instrument, light goes through my solution here that has a specific concentration, and then it comes out in the instrument, and it's read a specific absorbance. And so there are three major things for AP chemistry that can affect this absorbance. Um, if you touch this little thing, this is known as a cuvette, or you could call it the sample. If you touch the cuvette and your fingerprints get on it, it'll kind of block the path of light and that'll increase my concentration. So there's that first one. Um, if I have solution left over in there and then I add more, or if I have like a leftover solution that's of a higher concentration, like if I have it left over in this cuvette or sample, it'll increase the con concentration or absorbance of the solution. And then finally, like it, let's say I rinsed it with water and I had leftover water, that's going to dilute the solution inside there. And so that'll decrease my concentration. These three things are um, uh, things that can affect the absorbance. So just something very quickly for us here. <clears throat> now, all of this can derive what's known as the Beer-Lampert Law, right? So the Beer-Lampert Law gives us this equation, and I'll rewrite it up here so you could see it. Absorbance is equal to epsilon BC, where the absorbance is the absorbance of light. E is something called the molar absorptivity constant. It's um, just a relationship between the light and the concentration. Not big in AP, but I'll introduce it to you anyways. L is the length of the sample. So you saw that I had that cuvette here. It's just how long this is. That's the length of the cuvette or the sample. Just how it is from left to right, like the width. And then C is the concentration. All right, so the amount of absorbed light is proportional to the solution. And this is, shows that if I increase the absorbance, I'll increase the concentration. If I decrease the absorbance, I'll decrease the concentration mathematically here. Okay, and then here's just like another setup. If I have light that goes through, right, and this is like visible light, that'll go through my solution, and the solution will absorb a certain amount of light. That's what will come out as the absorbance, and this solution has a certain concentration. And boom, that's what we'll see. Now, I could do this for a set amount of concentrations. I could do this for several 
samples, right? So let's say this is known as a calibration curve where I could do curve, calibration curve, where I could take several concentrations of the same substance and plot different concentrations of different absorbances. So let's say I got this, let me call this A and B here, just as an example, and this is C, right? So solution A, if I were to look at this graph at a concentration of 0 0.2, its absorbance is approximately 0 0.2 at a concentration of 0 0.2. So for substance A, 0 0.2 molar, gave me 0.2 absorbance. If I go over to 0.4, it looks like on the graph here, it looks like at approximately 0.4 molar, we got 0.4 absorbance. And that's how I read that. And so let's say, I don't know, let's say I'm like, oh, I have this sample A, and its absorbance was 0.5. What's the concentration? Well, I'd have to read that graph. I'd have to be given this graph. And so I'd look at the absorbance of 0.5, which is right here. Here it is on the graph, and then I go on down, and boom, it also looks like it's at about 0.5 molar. So that's not always the case, but that's just an example of reading these graphs. It looks like B, sample B, or the red line doesn't have this, right? So the red line, what would about um, for the sample B, what would a concentration of 0.6 molar give me as far as absorbance go? Well, I'd look at, I'm going to use a different color here. I'm going to look at, uh, I'm going to use red. I'm going to look at concentration as 0.6. I'm going to go up to the graph. Boom, right here. It looks like if I go over to the x-axis, it looks like that's 0.3 absorbance. So that's how you quickly read this graph. I know I got a little messy here. But this is just reading coordinates on a graph. I could use this. I could use this to identify unknown absorbances or unknown concentrations. So I'm going to end doing some quick questions here. Um, if the wavelength is not set, then you have to consider which wavelength is best, like in this 2021 FRQ. I'm going to do this one, and then I'll do one more sample and multiple choice question, and then end and have you do the rest. So it says a student plan, um, if you want, you could end the lecture here, um, and then you could try and do these sample problems on your own, and then you're responsible for doing sample problems five through seven here. Um, and then for help, you could do the AP style free response question from the 2021 exam. I kind of put them all together. All right. So you are responsible for doing sample problems five through seven as evidence and, and or sample problems FRQ and MCQ right here if you don't want to watch the lecture. All right. So I now am going to turn into doing these two sample problems. So it says a student plans to conduct a spectrophotometric analysis to determine the concentration of CO2 plus in a solution. The solution has a small amount of cobalt in there present as a contaminant. Contaminant meaning it's dirty. The student is given the diagram below, which shows the absorbance curves for aqueous solutions of cobalt and copper. The spectrophotometer available to the students has a wavelength range of 400 to 700. So that's where you like set. Right? I set to a specific wavelength. As I mentioned earlier, this can help us understand quantities right here. We can set our instruments to a specific wavelength depending on the color of our solution. The highest peak on the graph that we could get would be the best if I have an absorbance versus concentration graph in the end if I wanted. Right? So what wavelength should the student use to minimize the interference, meaning like graph getting in the way, for the presence of cobalt? Because so... They want copper 2 plus ion. So I need to look at this graph here. Now, the cobalt is in the way for all of these data points. So I probably would not choose any wavelengths that are over here. I want to minimize my interference from the cobalt. So I don't want to choose anywhere between maybe 400 and 600. 400 and 600 would, would be interference from cobalt. Do you see how all that gives me peaks of cobalt? But the moment I get a little bit above 600 here, now I got mostly copper 2 plus, And I have minimal cobalt. So I'd probably want to choose anywhere between 600 nanometers 
to 700 nanometers. You don't have to explain. It doesn't ask you to explain, but if you needed to, it would be because the cobalt 2 plus peaks become smaller, minimal in this range. And so that'll minimize the interference. All right, and then the last question I'll do here will be the sample multiple choice question. If you have any questions or concerns about this, we'll definitely go over this in class this week before we're done. So a student prepared five solutions of copper sulfate. I'm going to change the color here. With different concentrations and then filled five cuvettes. That's that sample thing I told you about each containing one of the solutions. The cuvettes were placed in a spectrophotometer set to the appropriate wavelength, so we don't have to worry about the thing like we did in the previous question, for the maximum absorbance. The absorbance of each solution was measured and recorded. The student plotted absorbance versus concentration, as shown in the figure below. Which of the following is the most likely explanation for the variance of the data point for the 0.6 molar copper sulfate solution? So here's the variance. Right? Look, it says at the 0.6... If you look at it, it looks like it's supposed to be here. Supposed to be here. Like lower, right? That point's supposed to be lower in absorbance, but it's actually showing a higher absorbance. So it's showing a higher absorbance than would be predicted. I'm going to write that down. Do you see how that point is above the line? So it's higher absorbance than predicted. So which of the following is most likely the explanation for a higher absorbance? A, the cuvette was placed, had some water droplets in it. No, this would lower the absorbance and this would lower the concentration. So that wouldn't be good. My point would be below the line. B, the cuvette was placed, was filled slightly more than the others. No, more solution would give the same absorbance. That's not increasing my concentration. If I have more of the same concentration, there's no change in absorbance. No change. Now, if I change the concentration, that's fine. C, the wavelength setting was accidentally moved away from that of maximum absorbance. Well, if it was moved away from maximum, it would minimize the absorbance. It would give me a lower absorbance. So it can't be C. So we're left with D, which is our correct answer, actually. The cuvette had not been wiped. Ah, fingerprints. Had not been wiped clean before being put in the spectrophotometer. That will increase the concentration, like I said before. And so D is our correct answer for sure. Alrighty, so this wraps up our last lecture here in Unit 3. This is Spectrophenomena in the beer lampert Law. To check your understanding, try and complete sample problems 5 through 7 on your own. For help, you could go back and try and do the AP Style Free Response question from the 2021 exam last year. Alrighty, that is all. If you have any questions or need any help, please let me know.